Hello. That's better. Um, I'm Catherine, for those of you who don't know me. Um, wow, what a powerful week. Um, so I've been here many times before, but this week was especially powerful. Um, when I came here, I was like, okay, Lord, you know, um, I feel like I'm doing pretty good. Like, I'm not, you know, I'm at peace. Um, I feel like, you know, we're good. But Lord, whatever, whatever you want to do, um, my heart's open. And um, I'm the type of person, or I was the type of person who likes to plan everything and oh, likes to oh. have everything nice and organized and like, okay, I'm going to do this and this and this and this. And um, God just really broke a lot of that off this week and showed me how to be his daughter and that I don't need to have everything figured out, that I can just trust him and he can just tell me moment by moment what it is that he would have me to do. And um, that's just been really powerful because it's like kick perfectionism in the butt. Um, because, you know, why do we need that stuff? Why do we need to feel like we have to do all these things? Why do we feel like, like for me, like, why do I feel like I need to be perfect when my Father in Heaven loves me just as much when I slip up and fall and just as much when I get my all my to-do list done? And... Yeah, that's, and another thing that also the Lord really delivered me from was a religious spirit this week, and I didn't know I had one, um, just that it's, you know, ring true for anyone, like, it's amazing, you never think you have these things, but then like, oh, they show up. Um, so I went, so um, that has been like so incredibly freeing, because I, can, I don't have all the chatter, like when I'm reading the word, um, I can just read it, and I'm like, wow, I don't feel like condemned. And I also don't feel pressure to be a certain way. And it's just been really amazing to have that freedom and to not feel like pressured even by God, because he doesn't, because we're just his kids and he loves us and he just wants fellowship with us. So that was my week. Praise God. It's a blessing to be here. I'm so thankful to um be at the Hope of the Generations Church this week and to have the privilege to be be in health with, for my life. And I know that it's a privilege to, to be together with all you folks. And I don't get up in front of people and do... I mean, I've, I'm a school teacher um, substitute now, but not... I haven't... I don't really sing in front of people. So, but when... Um, I have through the years, the Lord has given me um, songs in my heart that I just sing in my heart, and I feel I'm thankful for the privilege. This is a place that I feel I can just share that. And he's, when when you said um, about um, to edify, That's right. and already the Lord had brought to mind this, the words, it's just simple little song. Uh, years ago, the Lord gave it to me, but this I'm thankful for this week because it's been several years now that, about five years, that I've been going through some things that have brought me um, to the, I'm just thankful that the Lord has given me my joy back in a way that I haven't known it. I've, I've been, you know, communicating with the Lord the last five years, but I've not been in the Word like I had been earlier in my life. And because the Lord has delivered me from the guilt of things that I've been going through in the last five years, and I'm thankful and I praise his name. And uh, this song, when the brother said edify, that's what it's about. <laughs> edify until... My Jesus comes, edify until the race is won, edify until he calls me home, edify until because I'm his own. <clears throat> well, I belong to Jesus. And Jesus lives in me, 
And he gives me the hope of life for all eternity. Yes, he gives me the hope of life. My Lord Jesus Christ gives me the hope of life for all eternity. To the glory of God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. You've been here before, haven't you? Yes. I I've, know. I was going to say over the last eight to ten years, I've been here several times. Good. And one thing I've noticed is these leaders do not age. <laughs> I was just she amazed. She does, for sure. <laughs> so, anyway, I've had... A, I noticed when we were going through the healing of the whole body today that I was noticing all the things that had been healed over the years. I mean, probably 20 or 30 little things and three or four big things. And so I praise the Father for that. And then this week, in the middle of one of the sessions, part of one of my teeth fell out. And I thought, oh, that's right. I wanted my teeth healed. I'd forgotten <laughs> that that was one thing I wanted to happen. So um, they prayed today, and I where that there was like a gap in there, and I kept putting my tongue up there, you know. And, and the, when I was eating all week, it was hurting, and so I noticed at dinner my, it didn't hurt to eat. And then I trying to put my tongue in that hole, and there's there's no hole. And I thought, well, maybe I got some food stuck in there, so I'm flossing and flossing and it's something's happening <laughs> so so is there a tooth in there now well it, there's no hole anymore i don't know i haven't looked in the mirror but <laughs> <laughs> anybody got a mirror Anyway, I'm believing for a tooth, and not, not a gold one, a natural one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had a grocery list. I want my tonsils back, my appendix back, my uterus back, other things too. They're on the way. Amen. <laughs> I believe with you. All right, can you all hear me? Yes, sir. All right, awesome. Um, this is my first time being at Be In Health, like my first week. I was at a two-day seminar or a conference two years ago, um, and it was very eye-opening. Um, and I'll be completely honest, I was coming down here, and I'm thinking, okay, God, there's one thing I want you to fix, that's it. Um, and I, I wasn't even, like, actually thinking that I was going to talk a testimony tonight, because I'm thinking Monday, check it off. Tuesday, Wednesday, okay, let's just go through it. And then about Wednesday, I'm thinking... There's got to be, I, I came down here for something. I want God to work in my life. Um, and Wednesday, I feel like the Lord is telling me, hey, you should probably go up there Friday, tell a testimony, tell what happened. And Wednesday, I'm like, uh, maybe some other time. Thursday afternoon, I'm like, uh, no. That's how the conversation ended, me saying no. And then Thursday night, I'm just laying in my bed. Uh, my mom had fallen asleep. And I'm thinking, do you actually want me to tell a testimony? And he's like, well, I mean, I did ask you a couple other times this week. And I said, okay. Um, give you like a little backstory before this. My, the last several weeks, I have surrendered the full-time ministry. And I knew there were things in my life that was blocking me from being the man of God that God wanted me to be. And like I said, I came down here just getting that few couple of things and then going back and being able to serve God the way he wanted me to serve him. And I found out that not only did I come down here for that one thing, I came down here for a list of things that I didn't even know even existed. And I'm thinking, okay, that hurt, that hurt, ouch. Yeah. And then today I'm thinking, I actually get to tell people what has happened to me and I get to use this opportunity to not only 
glorify him, but be able to edify others. Um, I came down here with an insomnia. Um, I've had it a long time. And last night, I actually was able to sleep like a baby for the first time in years. Um, and I, one, I just want to say thank you, God, for letting that happen. But coming out of this week, and I could probably, I, I could say personally that I was, I was one of the people that was a huge fan of Dr. Wright. And I looked up to him as a mentor. I talked to him several times. Um, and he's somebody that I hold in high respect. And to be completely honest, there's just people that you want to be like. And that's like somebody that I kind of want to be like. Because he meant so much to me. Um, but coming out of this week and hearing what God's word said and hearing what God wanted me to do in my life. I'm not I'm not going to say that I've got this 120% because it's only going to be possible with God. But I'm ready for what God has for me in my life. And honestly, I was talking to um Scott, not the pastor Scott, but Scott, I can't pronounce his last name. Yeah. Wahashi, is that what it? Is that your last name, Wahashi? Okay. Iwahashi. Okay. I was talking to him, and my excitement is like when you when you have that glass jar and you like you unscrew it and it overflows. And he told me he's like, keep that to the point where whenever you unscrew it, it's overflowing with joy. You take that step by step, and God will lead you. And coming out of this week, mm-hmm. like I told Scott, I'm super excited. I want God to use me in a whole lot of ways that I didn't even think were possible. And I just wanted to thank all the leaders here that have helped me and that are helping a whole lot of other people because this changes lives, God changes lives, and God honestly, coming out this week, God honestly will have, means so much more to me than honestly what I could ever ask for so amen I have to come up here so my heart will stop pounding I was supposed to be in psychiatric help by now on medication but instead the Lord the Lord provided for me to come to be in health last year and again this year and I'm very I'm very very thankful and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free And you shall be free indeed. I want to give a plug for Spiritual Lifeline. I've been very blessed during this last year to counsel with Miss Carol. And uh, it's been a tremendous help to me. She's like so many of them here. Kind and compassionate and caring. And anyway, Spiritual Lifeline is is a blessing. Uh, I've struggled with fear. I guess that's the main thing, but there were lots of other things that went with it. Um, But I've discovered um, my desperate need for to know the Father's love. And what Miss Carol said today really touched my heart that she made so much progress in a a short amount of time and she began to pursue the Father. And that's that's one of the keys that, that I have got to do. That's what the Lord has put on my heart, especially even last week, that Jesus came to manifest the Father. And I desired, I desire that relationship. This morning, um, I, I've discovered one door, one of the door points, doorways to fear in my life is conflict. And this... Um, It's just like a conflict. Well, there was a lot of conflict in my home and growing up, but um, I I would just kind of lay down and let the enemy walk all over me and get all stressed out and everything. But he's been giving me wisdom out of his word to go on the offensive. This morning, a scripture that I really haven't had much insight into, 
and about the Father's love, the per perfect love casteth out fear. But I, I couldn't, I could not grasp that verse. But I learned through being held that it's your love relationship with God, the Father, and it, and um, then yourself. I've been making progress in that area. But then, but then he, this morning I was laying in the bed, and I was really expecting the Holy Spirit to give me some insight, and He did just that. That if I'm in conflict with someone else, that I've got to keep myself in the love of God in regard to that person, beginning by uh, blessing them, praying for them, forgiving them, and and, and in, instead of letting the enemy bring all these negative thoughts, you know, you're trying to blame, you're you're all stressed out, you're 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 in fear with torment, and you really don't want to like whoever or whatever, you know, the conflict. But, but, and I had studied that verse in Jude 21 recently uh, and meditated on it, thanks to the influence of being health, um, about keeping yourself in the love of God. So, that, so that's, that's part of my homework, that if conflict comes into my life, I've got to go on the offense loving that person, praying for that person. I'm not, anyway. I'm thankful this morning. That's what the Holy Spirit gave me about that verse of Scripture. gave me insight into that. And to me, that is like a spring in the wilderness. Praise the Lord. In case of the last being first or first being last. It's short and sweet. I just wanted to give God glory for um, just giving me hope. And I wasn't going to come up because I didn't have anything dramatic, although it is, but to explain it doesn't sound dramatic, and I'm not even sure all what God has done yet because I've just hardly processed anything, I don't feel like, but I just know a lot has been done in my heart, and I have hope when I felt hopeless and helpless, and um, so I just want to give God glory and just thank the staff here. Your hearts are just beautiful, and um, that probably softened me and more than anything. It's just to see you guys in action, so thank you so much. Thank you. It's going to be good. I'll try. I believe it. Hi, everybody. Um, two weeks ago, I wasn't planning on coming here. Registered at the last minute. And I didn't come here for this. I came for another reason. I'm not going to tell you what it is. But got to tell you this, that I'm not a morning person. If I don't get a good night's sleep, I become very nasty. Ugly. I'm serious. And if you know my husband, you could ask him. He would verify, you know. And uh, there's, a, there's a joke that I heard that this man married uh, an ugly woman, but she sang so good. And then honeymoon came, and honeymoon morning came, and he turned over, and he said, please sing, you know, and... That's the way my husband feels sometimes. Please sing because this morning you're really, really not a nice person because I did not get a good night's sleep. Well, you don't get a good night's sleep if you're sleeping four people in two double beds and you can't turn over and you're sleeping right on Highway 19. The truckers are going everywhere. Oh my God, it was awful. So guess what? Wednesday morning, I was really in a bad mood. Don't talk to me, don't say hi, don't look at me, because I'll probably bite your head off. And that is not what I was learning. I was learning that I have to assess the situation, not destroy things, not destroy friendships, just before, because you're in a crappy mood. And so it took me all day to address that issue with the person. And I said, Lord, this is the walkout part. I walked out on Wednesday. And, okay, Lord, I don't want to restore this to our relationship. I want to, this would be positive, constructive, good results, but I'm going to take all day to get my anger out of the way so it won't come out, and I will be a nice person. Well, thank God that happened. Took me all day, but it happened. And I'm thankful because now when I go home and I have to address people that weren't here, that didn't hear anything that we all heard, 
I said, how am I going to address it with them? Because they have no clue as to what I went through and how to deal with stuff like that. Well, I'm thankful that I'm here. I don't care if I registered in the last minute. I don't care if I did, came here for other reasons. But I'm thankful for that. And there was one verse that really hit home with me. It's in Matthew, and I can't tell you the you know, chapter and verse, but it says this. And I'm sure you heard it. Do unto others as you have them do unto you. Everybody's heard that, right? But the last phrase of that is, this is the law and the prophets. So it's a commandment. It's not just a nice thing that we just hear. It's a commandment. Just like love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and strength, and your neighbors, this is the law and the prophet. Well, that one is too. So when I address that person, it was the law and the prophets for me to address them like I would have them to address me in a situation so difficult that could destroy things. So I'm really thankful that I was able to walk it out without any fear. Um, and a great result happened. Amen. Amen. This has been an, another incredible week for me and for my life. I think this is my fifth conference, including walkout conference. I am so enormously grateful for everything that the Lord has done for me this last year and a half since I found out about being health ministries. A year and a half ago, I was not able to get up here and dance with the church. As my HGC family knows, the Lord did a fabulous miracle after my first conference, and that was to heal two holes in my heart along with um, giving me a new set of lungs and no more asthma. And that was confirmed by my cardiologist in Tennessee. And I no longer see my pulmonologist or my allergist. And I no longer take lung medications or heart medications. And when I come up here to dance to join my Georgia HGC family, it is an overcoming of the enemy of my soul. It is done by faith. And it is also in praise to my Heavenly Father that I have the strength to be able to come up here and dance in, in confidence, in strength. Also today, I received a phone call from Tennessee from my son and daughter-in-law. Several months ago, my daughter-in-law, Jessica, um, had began having uh, in internal um, problems, and subsequently she was uh, diagnosed with a mass on her uterus. We began praying in our Bible study groups in Tennessee for my daughter-in-law, and the surgeon thought that they were going to have to do a hysterectomy on her. Um, she's only 41. And um, before our group came from Tennessee to come to the conference this week, we had prayed for Jessica and were believing God for good results and that she would not have to have a hysterectomy. And the Lord um, gave me the scripture about when Jesus um, came across the fig tree and he commanded that the roots of the fig tree would dry up and he cursed that fig tree um, and it did dry up. That was the prayer that we prayed on her behalf on Thanksgiving Day in Tennessee. Today, during my lunch break, I received a phone call from my son and daughter-in-law in Tennessee. 
My daughter-in-law saw her surgeon today. The surgeon said that the mass is there, but the cells of the mass are dying. <laughs> the surgeon asked my daughter-in-law whether she wanted to go ahead and have the hysterectomy because she was willing to do it. My daughter-in-law said, I am a woman of faith, and I have a mother-in-law that goes to a ministry in Georgia. And we've been reading a big white book, and we've been watching DVDs by P Pastor Henry Wright, who is in heaven now. I am forever grateful for the last year and a half that I had the honor to get to know Dr. Wright. And I am so grateful for this amazing team. I am forever grateful for my father showing me that I am his daughter, that he loves me, and that I am able to take that information back to my Tennessee spiritual family as well. And I am forever grateful that he has revealed the Father's love. My son and daughter-in-law have a farm and lots of animals, and they're unable to leave that farm, but I'm grateful that through technology and through what we're able to bring uh, to our family in Tennessee, that their faith is being raised up and built like a solid house, and that my daughter-in-law was able to make a profession of faith to her surgeon today, and she made the decision to share her faith with the surgeon and she has deferred to not have the surgery. And the surgeon said that she will um, see her in a few months. And my daughter-in-law said, I believe that in a few months that the rest of those cells are all going to die. And I will never have to have the surgery. And I give God all of the glory for that. Bless you. Hi. I'm also Catherine. There's another Catherine. Um, so about two years ago, I was watching a TV show called Sid Roth, and Dr. Henry Wright was being interviewed, and I was doing pretty well, so I just thought it was interesting. Didn't really think too much about it. Thought it was interesting. And then over this last summer, I came down with something having to do with my nerves. Couldn't walk <clears throat> all summer long. Just couldn't walk. My mom's had something kind of similar, and my grandmother was be bedridden. So anyways, someone was telling me about Dr. Henry Wright, and I was like, this is so familiar. Like, I feel like I've heard this before. And so I looked him up, and I was like, oh, it's the same guy from two years ago that I just happened to see on, you know, YouTube. <laughs> and um, so I got his book, and I'm still bedridden, like, all summer. And um, anyways, it's the big white one. <laughs> and I got to, I don't know what chapter, not too far. And I mean, obviously, I'm here. And I'm walking. And uh, praise God. <laughs> and I thought I'd have to come with my dad. Um, I managed to, I came from California, so I managed to take a plane, rent a car, everything, and uh, feeling better, I'm just, like just sleeping better, feeling better all the time. Um, he just really showed me that it was, uh, and same with my mom and my grandmother, like I just really thought that, oh, it's something you just get inherit, you know, you inherit things, and you just kind of unlucky maybe. And uh, and then I was reading through it, and I was like, oh, there's this thing about having a broken heart. And I thought, oh, I don't have a broken heart. I've never 
I don't know, cared enough about any boyfriend or anything to have a real broken heart. I don't know. I never thought about having a broken heart. But then I realized I did. I had a broken heart and I'd kind of laid it from my childhood and I laid it with kind of like pride on top, sort of to puff myself up so I could survive my incredibly hard on me parents. And uh, anyways, when I did that, I ended up telling um, this one parent about it. And this parent, I'm, I'm like the only Christian in my family. So she just gets this look on her face. And um, about a week later, she started repenting to me about my whole childhood, <laughs> basically. And anyway, so it's just been this release. And this was all before I got here. <laughs> and it's just from reading like a chapter of that book. <laughs> and um, Anyway, so I'm here now, and every it's just been unpacking all sorts of things, and uh, I just give God all the glory. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I, I came here, uh, this is the first time I've been in Be In Health, and um, I actually came here, uh, my wife and I, and uh, I wasn't really expecting much. I really came for my wife and for her healing. That's why they call uh, it For My Wife. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> All right, well, uh, I can see that, yeah. Yeah, you got it now, don't you? <laughs> uh, but obviously, the uh, husband oftentimes has many of the problems associated. I have given the wife the problem, you know. So, um, But at any rate, uh, getting back onto the... Uh, well, at least my wife agrees with you about yeah, that. I'm, I'm, uh, sure, I'm sure every uh, wife will agree there. Uh, but at any rate, um, it's interesting. Um, what I've received here, though, is uh, actually... You, you know, you hear about you need to know your enemy, but this is the first time uh, that I've actually learned uh, really about my enemy. It, 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 the scripture says to renew your mind, but you cannot really renew your mind unless you know your enemy. And so, uh, first off, I'm very grateful uh, for God. I mean, be in health. This is truly um, a message of getting health in, in your bodies, but it, it's even more than that. It, it really is overcoming. It's, it's understanding your enemy to overcome. And, uh, and so that's what really God's done uh, for me. It's just opened my mind up in, in a new way to that whole thing uh, of spiritual warfare. And um, the two big ones that God laid on my heart that I repented of was um, accusation and remember, I'm new here, so there's layers and layers, I'm sure, that have yet to be re revealed. But the two that really spoke to my heart was uh, accusation and rejection. And I've done a lot of uh, repenting with regards to that. And I'm very thankful for, for God for that. Um, and, you know, one other thing, I'll be uh, truthful. Um, I came here thinking, actually, when I heard that uh, Dr. Uh, Wright had passed away, I, I mean, I was grieved. My wife and I, yeah, I can't believe it, you know. And, and we, we, we were thinking it, it's got to be canceled because this is a free gift, you know. Uh, and, and, and so I thought, it, it, I'm sure the church is going to compose themselves. But sure enough, uh, you guys were faithful. And uh, there's just a sweet spirit. And God gave me this verse for you guys. Um, maybe I won't get choked up here in sharing it. But... Um, uh, it's from uh, Psalm 126, and it's um, uh, verse 5 and 6. And they say, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. And, you know, it, it says in St. Matthew, uh, in Matthew 13, 38, it says, uh, the field is in, in one of the parables, the parable of the uh, uh, weed, the good seed. The field is, it says in 38, uh, the field is the word, and the good seed are the children of the kingdom, or sons of the kingdom. And that is what you guys are. And as you continue uh, to just sow, even in this time of tears, there will be a great harvest. It's a surprise for me to be here. It's a surprise for me how this week went and the love that was extended from everybody who shared here from the church community and the, um, I'm just really overwhelmed. Um, 
I definitely did not expect to do the baptism. Um, but um, after all the prayer I got and the deliverance, um, God is just telling me to keep that experience in mind, uh, to surrender to falling back into the water, just to surrender with all I have and all I've dreamt of and trust him to what he's arising me to. And um, I just really felt that he wanted me to say here, I am an overcomer. And that's how I leave here in faith and um, with gratitude. So thank you to all and uh, also thanks to my husband who made it possible that I could be here. Hi everybody, um, my name's Katie and I'm not even sure exactly how the Holy Spirit is gonna say all of this. Um, pretty many of you saw the week start with an Amish couple. I was the wife. Um, still am the wife, but I no longer look Amish. Um, and I was reminded that before we came down here, I had started really singing the, I don't even know who sings it, the song, I Raise a Hallelujah. And one of the first parts of that is I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. And I would find myself singing it, and that verse kept coming out. And my husband was not familiar with the song, and I would find myself singing it in front of him a lot. And he would go, um, thank you. And I was like, no, 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 I don't mean that you're my enemy. Um, but the truth of the matter was I, I knew that we have an enemy. I knew we were supposed to be fighting him, but that's not who I was fighting. I was fighting my husband. Um, we've only been married for six years. I wasn't raised Amish. I took on the dress for my husband. And um, I took off a false identity. I didn't realize until this week that that was what that was. That's not this daughter of God. Um, but a lot of you have probably heard pastors John and Adrian. Um, she talks about how he had offended her before, and he said it was an accident. And she said, well, you might have hurt my heart by accident, but now you better heal it on purpose. Well, honey, Emmanuel, I've really hurt your heart. And that's what the Holy Spirit told me to come up here and say, that I am sorry that I joined with those spirits so tightly that only God's crowbar could pry me apart. And although I have taken off the covering of the Amish because they're not my church, I'm putting on a different covering of godly order. And you are my head and I know that Christ is yours. So I am deeply sorry for breaking your heart. And I will do everything in my power that comes from him to restore things in our home and bring peace and godly order for our children. And I know it's going to be a long battle. I know what you know, what is waiting at home. But I'm really grateful for the tools that we received here. Because it's going to be a lot. But I am so grateful to you, too, for being my hero. You know, I know my husband doesn't really like attention on himself. He's a very introverted man, but I just got to say, when we went to the conference in November and pastors John and Adrian spoke, I sat there and wearing the pants like I always have for the last six years. I looked at him when they talked about this conference and I said, we're going, hold your hat, I'm signing us up. Bad plan, really bad plan. Because of course, did he feel respected? You know, that was not godly order. But 
I, I said, we're going. Our marriage was in such trouble that I was figuring, I know Jesus and I love him and I love our children, but I don't think I can do this anymore. I think it's over. So I actually, again, don't do this, but I said, God, you got to fix it. By the end of this week, you got to fix it or I'm leaving. I can't do it. I'm not going back home to what we lived. And I had been talking to God before saying, God, you got to give me a new heart for this man. You got to change my heart. You got to make me love this man. You got to do it because you are the source of all love. You got to fix this. You got to fix this, God. You got to fix this. And I really thought that the change had to start with you. And he showed me that's not true. He said, if you want to see the change, it starts with you, Catherine Jane. So I'm going to be the change, and I thank you for coming down here because my husband sees buck hunting as a high holy day. Okay, I don't know how many of y'all are, are hunters, but in Pennsylvania, we only have two weeks of hunting. My husband doesn't talk about Christmas. He doesn't talk about children. He doesn't talk about, Nothing will interrupt buck season, okay? That first morning, I am telling you, this man who is very reserved, quiet, all of a sudden, I mean, he is, he is crazy for it. He loves it. It is his time with God. He goes out into the woods to spend time with God. He gets two weeks a year. And when I, wearing the pants, said, we're coming down here, he said, that's buck season. And I was like, oh, I guess we're not going. <laughs> he said, I'll give up buck season to go down there. It started the day we left. He went out in the woods that morning. He came home. He took a shower in the afternoon. He didn't even get to stay out the whole day. And we came down here. And we came down here for God to teach me my sin. And he's only just started to show me the depth of it. So I'm sorry. I love you. And I want to make a new vow to you. It will start fresh with me now. Thank you. Hold on just a minute. Before you, before you leave, before you leave here, I would like for your husband to come up and give you a hug. If in he'll do that. In do front that? of everybody. <laughs> yeah. Good evening, everybody. Um, I have an accent, and I pray that everyone will understand what I'm about to say. My name is Lucy. This is my second time of coming here, and I enjoyed it. The first time I came, I received my blessing. But it came back again. I didn't know why. But this visit, I understand why. Because um, I realized that when you are insane or when you are having bitterness in your heart, the pain will come back. So I was having bitterness, unforgiveness, anger, depression, hatred, accusation, especially when I lost my first son. So I was accusing some people that they are responsible. So I was really depressed. I was, in, I was angry. I was, I, I hate everybody. So when I came here, I learned because I'm angry, 
I'm depressed. I'm not forgiving people. That is why I keep on having the pain. So when the pastor was preaching two days ago, he was saying we should pray for forgiveness of sins. If you are depressed, we should ask God to remove that depression from our system. We should not be angry again. So I started praying because I have a mindset that I'm going to pray to God that I have to forgive everybody, everyone that has offended me. Everyone. And I'm not going to be pointing an accusing finger at anyone anymore. You got God lost my son, that's why he took him away. So, and then, along the line, there's a saying that says, do not let the enemy hold the precious time that you have in this life. I'm like, wait a minute. I repeated it again. Do not let the enemy hold the precious time that is your precious time that you have in this life. So I knew the enemy was holding my precious time. So I promised God that I'm going to restore my relationship with him. So when the when it was announced that if you want to be baptized you are free to come. Although I've been baptized twice, when I was a baby, two months old, when I started the kindergarten at my Catholic church, Catholic school, sorry, in Nigeria. I'm a Nigerian, but I've been here for about 20 years now. So I said, since I was baptized then, I've, I've, I've been in sin. Because unforgiveness is sin. Depression is sin. Anger is sin. I'm having all this. I need to go there and wash all this away so that God can forgive me all my sins. Then, before we went to the um, water baptism, I was sitting right there because I came in walking with a walking stick. So I told my friend, when I heard that sentence, do not let the enemy hold the precious time that you have in this life. So I told her, I said, look, I'm going to leave this stick here on that chair. And I'm going to walk to the resource center and have some tea too. And I'm going to walk back on my own. I'm not going to use this stick anymore. The stick belongs to the enemy. By God, I walked. Look at me. I walked. Because I prayed to God. I said, God, I have forgiven my enemies. I've forgiven everybody that from the bottom of my heart, I was saying that prayer. I've forgiven everybody. I'm not going to be depressed anymore. No more anger. No more hatred. No more accusation. I'm a child of God. I'm renewed in the spirit. And I got it. Because the stake is not for me anymore. I'm really grateful to God. So, I thank you. I thank you, Lord. And then, he says, silence 
is not the best solution. Sometimes talking about it may be the best solution. So I said, I'm not going to be silent. I'm going to say it out there. Because that is the best solution. You know, to talk about it and share it and give praise to God. Because the doctor told me he is going to operate on me. I'm going to have surgery. I have a back problem. I have what they call um, the disc, the disc pressing on my nerve. And I didn't know that for five years, I've been having this pain. I've been taking injections upon injections. Each time I have this injection, a steroid injection, I'll be okay maybe for three months. After that, the pain will come back again. I've had about six times that I've had that injection, but the pain keeps coming back. Then the doctor said I should go for MRI. I went for the MRI and it was revealed I have a disc dissertation that it's pressing on my nerve. So I have to come for surgery. And then my son just died in this surgery room. He didn't come back. And I'm like, I won't go into that surgery room. My Lord is going to heal me because I believe he's going to heal me. How he wants to do it, I don't know. But I believe he's going to do it. So I told the doctor, OK, um, how do you want to do the surgery? He said he's going to cut the disc part that is pressing on the nerve. And I asked him this question. OK, when you are cutting that disc, are you going to? Is it going to affect my, my spine, you know? He said, oh, by the way, it's 50-50. It may affect it. Then I asked him, then I'll be paralyzed? He said, well, but we are always careful. Then I told him, no, I'm not going to do that. So I left. Since then, I've been praying. So I registered for being held last time when I came, was it around August or July thereabout. And I, when I was registering, I said, when I come here in December, I'm going to receive my healing. I'm going to walk without the stick. I said it then. I said this December, this retreat is when I'm going to receive my healing. And it has happened. So I pray that the healing will be permanent. I pray that. That is what I'm praying for now, that it will be permanent. And I know it will be permanent because I've told God that I've forgiven everybody. I'm going to stay away from sin. And I'm going to serve the Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have a song. Can I sing it? Thank you for your testimony. Thank you so much, Pastor. I am grateful, oh Lord. I am grateful, oh Lord. For what you have done for me. Hallelujah. I am grateful, oh Lord. Amen. I cannot bend like this before. If something fall on the ground, I have to call my kids. Please, can you get that? No. <laughs> God is wonderful. Thank you. 
Hello. <laughs> My name is Brenda. And um, I, about a year ago, I had a friend who um, lent me the More Excellent Way book and uh, had marked a few of the diseases that I had. And at the time, I couldn't even focus to read it. And um, I hang on, hung on to it for a while, and then I um, got it back to her. And um, through some diff different circumstances, I ended up, actually right now, I'm temporarily living with this friend and her husband, and they, they have a deep healing ministry. And so they did start with some... Um, some casting out of some things, and it, you know, and and um, all of a sudden I was able to focus. I was able to read. I was. Um, she gave me the um, spiritual roots of disease book that I had. I've just finished reading, and um, that's where I found out about this uh, conference, this retreat. Um, and so it, it truly is a miracle that I am here because isolation and oh, fear and rejection, all those things were so strong in me. Um, but when I finally called and registered and made the decision, I started to have some hope. I started to actually get so excited about something <laughs> that I hadn't been in a long time. And, and I had lost all joy in my music um, and... Uh, Never knew if I would get that back or not. <laughs> um, the first night that we did our uh, that we did our prep work was the first time in a long time that I actually had the courage to sit alone with God, and He just really opened my heart. and um, And that's thanks to Carol for encouraging me to do that. And and then Doug had suggested that I make a list of fun things to do. And, you know, <laughs> he said, some people haven't had fun their entire life. And I said, oh, yeah, I had a fun, I've had fun during my childhood. I just haven't done anything like that in a while. And for the last two years, God has been telling me to find out what I, what brings me joy and to do more of that. And to be gentle with myself. Very difficult for me to be gentle with myself and realizing that I had the, had the unloving spirit. So between rejection, fear, unloving spirit, I was pretty much a mess when I came here. <laughs> but I've seen so much emotional healing um, just with the truths that have been shared, with the repentance. And I have several diseases. I'm waiting for that. It's next. <laughs> healing with that is next. But... Um, so now that my mouth is so dry, I wanted to share a song with you as I I haven't been able to really sing with conviction in a while, but the worship songs here this week have just <laughs> really brought that back. I can't. <laughs> Hopefully I have enough <laughs> saliva to say. <laughs> Someone have one? <laughs> that would be awesome. And this is a song that... Um, God has always brought to my heart, um, and it just it just has such meaning for me. And um, so I'm just gonna sing a verse or two of that. <laughs> much better. <laughs>
Twas grace that taught my heart to fear and grace, grace my fears relieved. I once was lost. Perfectionism, I'm just moving on. <laughs> but now I'm found was blind, but now I see through many dangers, toils and snares, I have, I have already come, but grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace, grace will lead me home. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved, that saved a wretch like me. was lost oh but now now I'm found was blind but now I see